Hi guys. So we're back in the United States a bit earlier than expected, but uh, we, had a, we had a call a few weeks ago uh, about a very nice collection that was for sale. Um, and we're now in, uh, in Indiana um, uh, driving uh, to the collection um, and see what's, 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 what's going on there. Um, in the meanwhile, um, we're very close to uh, Ohio, uh, Daytona, and we're uh, going to visit the uh, United Air, Air Force Museum. Um, apparently, there are some nice uh, World War II planes there that we can uh, that we can check out. So I'm very um, excited to see that. Um, also, I just want to make uh, sure for all the um, people from the United States watching us um, that if you have a collection for sale or high-end militaria, we're very serious about it. And as you can see, we're already in the States picking up a collection. So don't hesitate to call us if you have anything nice for sale. Um, I can assure you we will um, give you a fair price and even a higher price than most of the local um, dealers here in the States as the, the market in Europe is just better for us to sell so uh, don't forget to uh, give us a heads up when you ever want to uh, sell your collection We just arrived at the Daytona uh, um, Air Force Museum and we just drove up the parking lot and already uh, we can see the big planes here uh, on the airstrip. So I'm next to the uh, amazing uh, C-17 uh, airplane uh, from, made from Boeing, amazing piece. And, um, and if you turn around, um, right over here, we can see all these very nice airplanes. And in the far end, we see the hangars. There are about four or five of them and the entrance of the museum is right over there. So I'm very excited uh, what we can see inside. entering uh, you can already see the very famous uh, Mitchell uh, bombing plane uh, very famous for, um, for uh, the bombings uh, that took place in Tokyo just after Pearl Harbor um, that you can al also see in the movie Pearl Harbor where they launched these huge planes uh, from, uh, from, an, uh, uh, from the warships uh, on the sea actually um, beautiful airplane impossible how they I can't imagine how they even flew these off uh, aircraft carriers uh, in the in the Second World War. Uh, beautiful hall and we'll hopefully see some better uh, World War II planes uh, later. So uh, just across me here um, we have the B-17 Flying Fortress, the most iconic bomber from the American Air Force during the Second World War. Um, it is named as Memphis Bell. It's a restoration, of course. Memphis Bell, you might know from the famous movie. Uh, the plane is in excellent condition, perfectly restored, and it has a special meaning for me personally because um, back in World War II, um, my grand uh, grandfather's uh, parents lived uh, in Knesselade, a town 30 minutes from Ghent, uh, where I still live. And uh, uh, one of these B-17s was shot uh, was shot down there. Um, and um, of course the local community looted the plane uh, from all its bits and pieces. The Germans even uh, reissued the engines. I still have pictures of that. Uh, and um, I still have little bits and pieces uh, that my grandparents took uh, out of the B-17 in my personal collection. So that's why it's for me a very special plane and um, amazing. For the first time I see one in, uh, in real life. Uh, so I have uh, goosebumps all over, uh, all over myself.
right behind me is one of the most iconic planes of World War II. It is the original uh, boxcar um, super fortress airplane that actually um, dropped the nuclear bo uh, bomb on uh, Nagasaki uh, a few days after uh, the bomb was dropped on, uh, on Hiroshima. Um, the, the replica bomb is, is right across here. It's an amazing plane, beautiful condition. It was flown uh, to the museum here in 1961 and it has been here ever since. So it is the original plane that uh, dropped the second uh, bomb during the Second World War. We're now inside a super fortress, um, as you can see, not uh, designed for tall men like me. Uh, beautiful inside, all the bombs are still here, and the cockpit in the front. Hi guys, so I hope you enjoyed the movie about uh, the Daytona uh, Museum, which was uh, very impressive. Uh, it was the first time I saw so many airplanes in my life. Uh, now, a little bit better of course, uh, we're just back from uh, Indiana and we're in a hotel here. And I took the liberty of, of putting all the stuff out that we found in the collection. Um, I knew of course what I was going to buy, uh, there were a few other surprises uh, uh, there as well. Um, but here's all the stuff I got, um, as you can see, typical um, American war booty. Uh, from the Second World War, um, the classic pieces are in between there. So I'll just walk you through a few of the items here. Uh, these are of course the typical uh, German Railroad Eagles, uh, a super nice souvenir uh, back in the days, uh, made from alloy and both, both of them still have the original um, bolts on the back. Uh, they're maker marked, uh, in extremely good condition, a beautiful piece for any collection of course. Um, these are one of my favorite pieces. It is the, the Azaz Fezes. Um, these were worn by, um, by Muslim troops, uh, Muslim volunteers by the SS. Uh, this is the parade model in a maroon color and of course the combat model in, uh, in green color. Uh, both of them still have their original insignias applied um, and it is uh, actually uh, hard and hard to find these with the insignias on there because a lot of collectors um, use these um, uh, insignia uh, to restore other caps. So um, today you can find a lot of these fezzes uh, with their insignias already stripped. So these are perfect examples, in excellent condition, sweatbands still intact. I have two more uh, over there. Um, here we have a nice uh, M34, uh, M34 uh, Edelstahl SS helmet with a, a pocher decal and next to it a very rare uh, police um, southern front camouflaged helmet with the decals still exposed. Um, a little bit further here, you have a nice vari variety of uh, SS um, insignia, um, uh, flat wire uh, officer tabs here, here, uh, flat wire cap insignias here, 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 and here, uh, normal breast, uh, normal uh, sleeve eagles, and here, of course, a very rare uh, Bevo flat wire officer eagle, um, very hard example to encounter today. Uh, as you know, I'm not a metal guy, but I could appreciate this piece. It's uh, an LDO. Uh, a, a tui for a, an iron cross and the iron cross itself is marked on the reverse um, under the pin with L, uh, L11 a very nice iron cross in mint condition then you might have seen this piece here it's the uh, uh, first time I've encountered it uh, a traffic police um, crash helmet 
in white, and you find these in, in brown for, uh, for gendarmerie, uh, which is uh, fairly encountered. But this example is the first time I've ever encountered one in white. Um, then, of course, here, one of the, 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 the major pieces of the collection is an original Waffen SS visor uh, officer example with a velvet band and a gabardine, a late war example uh, made by Picudo, typical SS interior, very sober, um, a nice saddle shape, no mothing, just a little bit of worn uh, uh, usage on the, on, the, on the band, but a, a very, very attractive example with a nice uh, zinc uh, set of insignias on the front. Um, what else do we have here? Of course, my favorite pieces, SS helmets, a typical uh, quest helmet um, um, uh, made with a, with a quest decal on there. Uh, textbook example, you can see here, nicely uh, toned, a little bit uh, uh, champagne colored. Um, chin strap is there, uh, drawstring is there, just an untouched SS helmet. And even rarer, also one of my favorite pieces here, is a double decal SS helmet, M35, but was reissued as a police helmet, and the original SS decal is still uh, under under the police um, decal. So the SS decal is, is here, and the police uh, decal was applied uh, on top of it, and it was reissued as a police helmet, but the interior is still marked as an SS uh, soldier, uh, untouched condition, a very, very rare helmet, and this will end up in my personal collection, of course. Um, to end the movie, um, this is a nice arrow made uh, uh, army visor cap, but with orange piping. Orange piping would be for um, military police or maybe um, recruitment uh, officers. Uh, the, the cap is in excellent condition, void of any mod damages. So, I hope you enjoyed this movie about all the stuff I, I found here. Um, of course, a lot of it will be for sale on the website uh, soon. Uh, and some items, of course, will end up in my personal collection. So uh, here we are from the United States. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. It's very important for us to gain more uh, people in our, uh, for our channel. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.